Over the past week or so, Bama has been the main point of conversation on the internet, as the series was released on January 12, 2023, with some immediate negative feedback. At this point, it's safe to say that the series is universally known to be bad and even downright terrible. Of course, I have seen it so myself, because I can't really make a video talking about it without watching it in the first place. To put it briefly, the show is bad, like actually awful. The show fails in not only being a faithful adaptation, but also in being funny, which it desperately tries to be through meta humor. The show uses meta commentary as its main form of humor, which gets annoying real fast. As a person who does even like meta humor in the first place, the show makes it really hard for anyone to continue watching the series. In fact, I was rapidly checking the timeline to see how long it was until the episode was over because the show was so unfunny. Outside of the humor, the show tries to be overly edgy and subversive, to the extent where you question what you're actually watching. The main character, Belma, is a terrible person who is impossible to root for. In extension, that thing is just as bad as a huge eagle that sells drugs for some reason. Fred is bland and annoying man child who tries to prove his manhood with little success. And Norbell, Shaggy's real name, is the only terrible main character of the show, and that's not saying much, as this character is still annoying at points. Neither the supporting characters have any appeal to them, and they are easily forgettable. That's not without talking about the first scene. It disguises itself as being a meta joke that involves new teenage students showering together, which is questionable to say the least. I find it hypocritical how they comment on the many tropes they use, just to do the exact same stuff without twisting the formula or doing anything creative with it. It's almost like they're pointing out they are using overused tropes to excuse their lack of unique ideas in the first place, which actually makes a lot of sense now that I think about it. To be honest, one of the worst jokes of the series has to be when they call out the audience using Belma's character for watching the cartoon. I mean, you created an adult cartoon, and now you're complaining that people are watching said cartoon? It's quite obvious that the people behind this cartoon don't even like cartoons in the first place, and are always doing this for the money. And was one of the creators me, many Cowling, my assumption basically turns into a fact. It's pretty hilarious if you think about it. With Minnie being a co-creator and voice actor of Belma, it's only as Belma in the series is more so represented as Minnie as a person than Belma as a Scooby-Doo character. Which brings me to my next point, the way swapping and subsequent controversy surrounding it. In October of 2022, the official trailer for Belma was released, which showcased its signature meta humor to the world for everyone to judge. That's a classic, and that's my point. Why change anything when the classics all still work, right? Oh, that's real. Other than that, a major controversy arose over the way swapping of Belma, turning her to an Indian as her original white design that has been with a character since day one. Of course, people would be mad about this, as a terrible idea to change the skin color of a character for no apparent reason but to destroy something that was established by created people that cannot even interfere with the creation as they have died. For those who don't know, Joe Ruby and Ken Spears both passed away in 2020 within months of each other. Months later, in February 2021, HBO Max announced that Belma would have her own TV show with Minnie Kowleen voicing her. With no accredited knowledge of each creator, knowing about the series. One can say that Warner Media, now WB Discovery, waited until they died in order to announce the series without the pushback. If that was the case, Warner unfortunately had an incredible luck, as the back-to-back -back deaths allowed for their idea to go into full production. Moving on from that bleak discussion, Shaggy and Daphne also had their racist swap for absolutely no reason, with Shaggy being black and Daphne being a mix of European and East Asian. I have no clue why they decided that race swapping universally well characters would be a good idea, but here we are. Fred seems to be the only character that was not race swapped, but he was consequently reduced to being a man child sport a teen who doesn't know how to do basic tasks. Fred seems to be the main character that they're trying to provide real life commentary on, which in that case it utterly fails in almost every single way. This is always not to mention a mini killing statement about how Belma's essence is not tied to her whiteness, which basically indicates that there is no logical reason for changing her race besides pushing intelligence to the masses once again, in typical Hollywood fashion. Belma in this series also makes several jokes about white people, especially white males. There's a rich white guy with a tiny dong, he did it. Now excuse me, I have to go find my missing mother. Why wouldn't if I were a rich white dude, I'd kill everybody just to get away with it. Those are all white people, Daphne. But also that he was just another entitled rich guy who might kill someone because he has a tiny dog. Which becomes off-putting once you realize the reason why they emasculated Fred's character from his original personality. These jokes in general are race dropping are a symptom of what I believe is a bitter staff who dislike the franchise they are working with. Which is probably why they changed so much about the series and pretty much the true reason why they removed Scooby from the main cast. Speaking of bitterness... Welp. We finally made it to the title of this video, the subsequent viewership of the series by people who know that they will not like the series they are planning on watching. Heat watching has been a scene for decades at this point, but the phenomenon becoming mainstream within the last 10 years or so. Due to the mass attention given to the show in particular, Belma has become a hot topic ever since the teaser released in October. Once the first two episodes were released, the show became a hot topic on the internet, but discussion of the show occurring right as I am writing this video. Due to this fact, many have decided to watch the series to form an opinion, either through a streaming service or piracy, but has garnered the attention that 
that HBO Max has needed after the push several months ago. Either way, the publicity surrounding this series has basically guaranteed that the show will be a success, even if the show is negatively panned. Apparently, on January 15th, 2023, CBR stated that the series has a second season in production according to the Entertainment Identifier Registry, which is basically an official registry of the creation of said episodes. The fact that these were added on the registry after the first season's strong HBO Max numbers indicates to me that the publicity surrounding the series was a major factor in the creation of future episodes, and this was not just in the back burner. Even if the renewal was pre-planned, the mainstream discussion around the episodes basically secured further production of said even without any cancellations mid-production. As we all know, all publicity is good publicity, and this series strongly supports that statement. I mean, the talk about this show will eventually drop off over time, but I say that the damage has already been done. <laughs> series like Ben with Fire with Attention Slash Publicity, and with the strong hate watching fandom behind the series, it's safe to say that HBO Max is not done with promoting the series for a while. HBO will continue far outreach for the next productions, and they have basically found a formula to keep enough eyes glued to their antics as possible, giving them more power in the process. In my opinion, the best way to reduce the power of a series like Bellman is not talk about them to the extent we are currently. If you're interested in checking out the episodes just for curiosity's sake, you should always pirate it and not discuss it on major platforms like Twitter, as that platform will attract their audience to watch it through official means like streaming. I already discussed this solution in my PPG video almost two years ago, already? Which is also about a Warner related series. Uh, me talking about these reboots is giving these shows free publicity anyway. The best way to stop these live action versions of cartoon from being made is to not watch it, in any monetary fashion at least. <laughs> if you still want to watch it, watch it online for free or torrent it. Just don't give these companies your money while watching it. At this point, I said what I needed to say about the series, and as I plan on not watching any more episodes beyond these initial two episodes, it's just my part in listening to the power the show has over the future of animation and entertainment in general. This video was surprising in terms of production, as I basically spilled out everything I wanted to say in a quick and concise manner, which is something that I haven't been able to do with the video for a long time. Nonetheless, I hope you're intrigued for the future of this channel in 2023, as I have a lot of topics on the back burner this year that will be interesting to say the least. Wait, I just realized that I didn't even talk about the plot for the series, which says a lot about the quality of the show. Wow, I haven't seen... Look away, Daphne. We all promised each other that we would never speak of her. Not ever. Daphne, she texted. Oh, Fred, thank God you're here. Ah. Brenda's. And to me. Nah, I know. I'm caliente, as this one people would say.